The very first step of the scientific method is trying to ask a question to identify the problem that you're going to be talking about. So the first part of the lab report actually mirrors that by stating the problem that you're going to be talking about. And the first thing you need to do is to convert that question into a problem statement. Now we talked a little bit about this when we did uh, the lecture series on the nature of science, but I'm going to explain this a little bit more. And it's actually crucial to whenever you're doing an experiment because if you do this right, it will set you up to succeed in the rest of the stuff. Uh, the problem statement is basically getting that research question, which is the thing that you want to address, and rewriting it in the form of a statement that establishes the relationship that you're going to examine between two variables. Now, this sometimes is grouped together with the background and the hypothesis in a section called the introduction section. But in my lab report, I like to make an own section just for that, almost to serve as to state a purpose for your experiment, the focus of what you're going to be talking about. All right? And it also sets you up to see what you're going to be looking at, what are the outcomes you're expecting, basically the overall direction of the laboratory experiment. And it should be formed in this structure that you see here, the effect of blank on blank. Now the first blank is going to be what we call the independent variable and the second blank is going to be the dependent variable. Now if you watch the Nature of Science lecture series you should know by now what those things are. But just to clarify it again, what you do here to find the right position for this is that you should ask yourself this question when you get to the research question. Uh, let's say for example the one that, the lab report that we're looking at which is uh, she's looking at what does acid rain do to plants? So that's her question. She wants to address the what the acid rain is doing to the growth of the plants. So you look at that question and then you ask yourself, to answer this question, what would I have to measure here? What is what is responding here? What is the outcome of this question? You know? I always start with that. So basically saying there, what would she have to measure in order to answer this question? What does acid rain do to the growth of plants? What is she measuring here? What is responding here? Well, the response here is what's being affected here. It is the growth of the plants. So that in this case, the dependent variable or the responding variable or the variable that you measure is going to be the growth of the plants. So now you know what to write on the second blank here. It will be something like the growth of the plants. Now, what is it that in this research question you will be changing or manipulating? What is the cause that generates the effect? You know, the effect being the growth of the plants. What is causing a change in that? What are you manipulating? What are you um, playing with so that you can see what happens? Do you observe what happens? In this case, of course, it will be the acid rain. So it will be the acidity of the environment is going to be manipulated to see what happens with the dependent variable. That's what's causing the change. So that's what's going to go in the first blank. So whenever you get the, you start with the research question, what you want to learn about, and then you ask these follow-up questions. You ask, what am I measuring? What is responding here? What is the outcome? What is the effect that it's happening? That's going to be your second blank or your dependent variable. And then you ask yourself, what am I changing? What am I manipulating? What is the cause here? What is generating the effect on the dependent variable? That's going to be your first blank. All right? That's how you set up a successful problem statement. And if you do it that way, you'll be doing great. All right? Now, from now on, when you compare the lab report explanation with the lab report uh, template and the lab report rubric, they're going to be pretty much the same. All right? They're just going to be giving you the, the same kind of description of what you need to do. So to save time in these videos, I'm going to just be talking about what's on the lab report explanation and then going to the lab report rubric to grade the sample that we're looking at. All right, so that to save time. But remember, when you're doing this for real, it's good to take a look at the template as well to see uh, what it has to say about that section so that you know how to do this well. And eventually, you're going to be so second nature to you that you won't even need to look at any of these documents, perhaps just the rubric to make sure you did it right. Let's go back to that sample that we're talking about here. So here's our problem statement. She's going to get that point for having the header here. And then she says, the effect of different levels of acidic solutions on tomatoes plants growth in centimeters so this should do a good problem statement so let's look at the rubric to see to make a decision and you see there's three points here for the problem statement the first question is, is the question specifically mentions the problem being addressed so this, she's talking about the effects of acid rain on the growth do you think by looking at the uh, at her sample that she did that I think absolutely she hit exactly where we're supposed to hit in here 
then you have a second point, which is saying it has to be the proper structure of the problem stated, the effect of blank on blank. So did she follow the proper structure? The effect of then a blank on another blank. So that's exactly what she did. So she followed the correct structure, so she's going to get that point as well. And then the variables are correctly placed or identified within the statement. In other words, you put the right thing on the right blank. So let's see that. What is she going to be measuring? The growth of the plant. So there you go. So that's on the second blank, tomatoes, plant, growth in centimeters. She even specified she was going to measure in centimeters. Very nice. And that gives you an idea of the outcome that she's expecting. And that was a dependent variable. It is on the right spot. So good. And then what is she going to be changing? She's going to be changing the acidity of the solutions, or in this case, uh, to represent the acid rain. So the effect of different levels of acidic solutions, independent variable. Very good. So she did everything right. That's how you write a good problem statement. You have to practice this. It's a skill that's earned with time. And throughout the year, we're going to do this many, many times.